Here's my TRS-80 Model 1. Uh, it's an old computer from the late 70s. And one of the problems these days, if you have one, is it's really hard to make floppy disks for it. You probably don't necessarily have any, like I didn't when I got this computer. But as you can see here, I'm booted up. So let me show you how I made these disks. And anyone can do it with uh, an older IBM PC and some tools on a new modern computer. Let me show you. I use a combination of tools to do this, and one of them is the freeware utility called TSR or TRS Write, and actually lets you write TRS-80 files into a disk image. What you have to do is first get a blank disk image, and I use something like an emulator here. This one is the TRS-80 emulator here. I don't really know who this is by, but it's unregistered, but it runs on Windows 10, and you just need the ROM files, so you boot into this, like with a new 80 DOS image you download off the internet, and you mount another disk image, like say another copy of the DOS disk image, and then you essentially format that second drive in here as a blank disk. Once you exit out of this, that disk will be made as a file here that's 128K. And this disk file is gonna be usable on my PC later, to actually turn into a real disk. And keep in, one, keep in mind that the TRS-80 Model 1 uses single-sided, single-density disks. They hold about 83K formatted or so, maybe 85, I don't know the exact capacity. Once you have your blank disk image, you wanna keep that virgin, so basically make a copy of it. And here I made a copy, say, called games1.dsk. And then I have a folder called games one nothing. <laughs> and in here, I copied a whole bunch of TRS-80 programs. So these CMD files are the actual apps. And you can get those off the internet. There are lots of sources for those, so just download those. What you do is you use the program TRS-Write, which is also freeware and available. Just Google for it. Look in my description. I will have a link to it. And you essentially write the files into it. So I was actually doing it to game6.dsk file, and I was writing all the files in the game6 directory, which is right here, these right here. And I was saving those into this game6.disk file. And when you're done, you will have some files here that are, you know, with a .dsk, and you know it's the right size for a single-sided, single-density drive, oh, and 40 tracks, I might add, when it's 128K. There's also a 35 track version that I think comes out to 109 or 101K or something like that. That's the actual size of the disk image that we're gonna be able to use on the PC in a second. You need to get these files onto an old PC, like this is my 46 here, which is this machine right here. And the key is, you really do need a 360K floppy disk. This one here is a 1.2 meg drive. They just do not write 360K drives properly. So you do need to have a 360K drive in your PC. When you have that and you have it on the computer, uh, you're gonna use a program called IMD to actually write the files. Now these are the DSK files we just created on my Windows 10 machine over there, but we can't write these directly, at least not with the IMD utility you need to convert them first to the IMD disk format first. You use the included utility that is called DMK to IMD. Now DMK is the TRS-80 disk format that's sort of been developed over time. Even though these are .dsk extensions, they are fully compatible with the DMK. Now, I just a word of caution, like I said, 130,576 bytes, this is the exact size that the file needs to be to work properly with this utility for a 40 track, single-sided, single-density disk. If it's any other size, it will not work. And believe me, I have found plenty of these I download off the internet that are a, like a DMK file or a DSK file that are a different size and I cannot write them with this utility. So one thing you can do is use that TRS-80 emulator and you basically mount a disk copy utility and you mount the file you downloaded as like disk one and you mount a blank disk as disk two and of course you boot off the disk utility of disk zero and you copy this weird sized file onto the blank image. And that should create a file that is then compatible with writing with this utility. 
Now you can see there are several different parameters or options you can pick for running this utility. These are the ones that you need to use to write this disk. Slash L, which is force low density, slash S, which is single density image, and slash UD, ooh, I have a typo right there, slash UD for allow user to find DAM tree as deleted. This is a very key setting. If you don't do that and you say use UN, the resulting image will write perfectly, but it will not work correctly on the TRS-80. It will sort of work, but it's say if you make a new DOS boot disk, it will not boot properly. You have to use slash L, slash L, slash L, slash S, slash UD. So if I hit enter, and it only takes a moment to convert it. And you can see here, 40 tracks, single-sided, single density. And I think this has something to do with the sectors per track or something like that. Now we're gonna use IMD to actually write the disk image. When you first run it, you have these settings here, which are obviously not correct. So we're gonna hit S, we're gonna change the drive to B, we're gonna change it to 40 cylinders, we're gonna change it to a single-sided disk, and double step off. Uh, double step is if you have a high density drive, even though it's 40 tracks, you have to double step because of course it's an 80 track drive and you're only writing 40. But like I said, I don't recommend using any high density drive to write these disks. It probably will not work properly. Okay, so I have the games1.imd selected to write, and now you're gonna need a blank floppy disk. So, or you can have one that has data, but it's gonna erase it. This is a 360K disk. You should use these, although I suppose you could use a high density one. I don't know why you'd wanna do that. You may notice this has a notch on both sides cut out, like you could flip this over, but you cannot write to the back side of this disk in a PC disk drive. And the reason why is because this index hole is needed for the drive to be able to read and write. And when you flip it over, it's on the wrong side. The index sensor is only on the side that can pick this up. So these disks can be flipped over if you use an Apple II or a Commodore 64, but not a TRS-80. You can't, the TRS-80 drives are just like PC drives and they need the index hole. So unless you have a special diskette that has two index holes, you cannot do that. Just in case anyone is wondering, the dual index hole disks do exist. I happen to have some here. I don't know what brand these are. They just say soft disk recycle. But whatever the reason, it has two index holes and this disk absolutely works flipped over in this drive and of course in the TRX-80. Okay, so I'm writing the disk now and it takes a little bit of time, but you can see here single-sided, single step, 10 sectors of uh, 256 bytes, and it slowly does the write in the format, and it will do its thing. Just wait. While the disk writes, I'll just show you my TRS-80 a little bit more. This Model 1 actually was given to me. Uh, it was found in the back of a pickup truck here in Oregon. It had been in the back of the truck under a camper shell for many years, parked out in the middle of a farm. Of course, the summers are hot here and the winters are cold and it rains a lot. And let's just say that truck had rusted to almost nothing. So everything in the back of the truck was getting absolutely flooded with mud and water and extreme heat and extreme cold. And this entire machine was sitting in that muck for years. So the guy who bought the truck to kind of use the parts of an old Datsun was just gonna give all the stuff away or throw it away. So I went and picked it up. And if you can believe it, this TRS-80 Model 1, which came with all of the parts you need to get it working, including this expansion unit, or expansion interface, and this monitor, was all there. All of the cables, like this is the parallel cable for the printer. I have the serial cable here with the serial interface. This has a double density disk drive adapter in it. It has the special connector here that uh, prevents corrosion that goes between this and the expansion interface. This has the level two ROM upgrade as well as the lowercase um, mod. And yes, this thing was quite corroded when I got it. A bunch of screws were rusted. A lot of it was rusted. Everything inside the monitor was rusty and covered in mud, but I took everything apart. I cleaned it and I replaced I think, one or two chips on board here. I think one of the RAM chips was bad and one of the video RAM chips was bad. So I bound a part to replace that. Plus the connector for the ROM expansion board was all corroded. So I had to repair that. But with some TLC, some good cleaning, you know, deep cleaning, I took everything apart. This computer now works really well. Um, it's a little scratched up here and there. It's a little bit of rust there. 
but uh, yeah, as you can see, it boots up. It's very stable. This whole monitor actually does work. I'm amazed. I even got four disk drives with it. Uh, there was a casualty though. One of the floppy drives completely rusted away. So I used that for parts. And there are the external cases. And these have seen better days. As you can see, that's a lot of rust. Well, there was, I scraped it off. So I need to kind of do some more scraping and maybe paint this with some Rust-Oleum or something. But yeah, and the power supplies for these all kind of rusted and fell apart, but it can completely be saved. Uh, this is the original Sugart 35 track disc drive that came with the unit and it even has the Radio Shack <laughs> original logo on there. This was the best case with the least amount of corrosion and I did actually put a little power supply board in there. So now I can just power it with an external 12 volt power supply and this works perfectly. But I don't like using this drive because it's only 35 tracks and it seems like most things are 40 tracks. So that's why right now I'm just using these two 40 track drives connected. But I got the long ribbon cable that connects all the drives together up to four here. And um, I also modify the monitor so it has an external video connection because originally the TRS-80 Model 1 video cable comes out of here hardwired and it connects right here on the keyboard, which is the actual computer. Um, and so I didn't like that. I wanted to be able to test with external monitor, especially while this monitor was not working before I fixed it. Uh, so I have since connected it externally here. There's an RCA cable here. And the little video driver board requires 5 volts DC, which comes in over this cable. So I have that right there. But otherwise, expansion unit is in good shape. It has the 48K total RAM, so it basically has 32K on there. And this has the 16K expansion for a total of 48. And as you can see here, I'm running the latest version of new DOS, a modded one with a lowercase. So yes, I have lowercase support, which is fantastic. Basically, this is pretty much modded out, except for maybe no hard drive. But whoever had this originally loved this computer. Okay, IMD is finished writing. As you can see, it's written 400 sectors. This is the damn thing, the deleted data that I had that slash UD switch. Yeah, that's normal and all the disk images have it, but this is a 40 track disk and everything looks good. So let's put this in the computer and it should work. Okay, here we are. Let's stick this into drive one. All right, we do DIR comma one and we take a look at what's on there. Okay, those are the files. Oh, desktop INI got put on here. That's uh, the Windows file. Uh, let's try one of these, like eliminate. You just type that, and that runs the program. There it is, Eliminator. And it works. Fantastic. Okay, so you really can't use this with one hand. <laughs> I am holding the phone, but it's funny because games are actually decent. Oh, and the sound does work. Um, this is the cassette output that goes to the cassette drive. And I have that connected to my speakers down here and they're just off, but it works. See? There we go. Pretty cool, right? So that's how you write discs for your TRS-80 Model 1. Let's just reboot this. That's how you write discs for the TRS-80 Model 1. This also works for Model 3 and Model 4. I've tested it with both of those, and that works great as well. So all you really need is that IMD program and TSR write and the emulator on the PC, and you can kind of transfer the files over. Hope this helped, and let me know if you have any questions. And subscribe for more videos, and I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you found this interesting. Thanks very much. Bye.